In an age of skyrocketing divorce rates, is it really possible to make love last? Welcome to the Falling in Love Forever Show with Drs. Barbara and Michael Grossman, the well-known relationship experts and best-selling authors of The Marriage Map Book. Each week, they share the latest information to help you enjoy your romantic partnerships so you can fall in love forever. Here are your hosts, Drs. Barbara and Michael Grossman. Hello, I am Dr. Michael Grossman. I'm Dr. Barbara Grossman. And we're here to share with you some knowledge based upon our book called The Marriage Map, The Road to Transforming a Marriage from Ordeal to Adventure. We wrote this book as a roadmap to what is the likely events to occur over a long-term romantic relationship. And when we get into marriage, there's a whole process of change. We have changes personally for us individually. There's changes that occur in our marriage life. There's changes that occur in our family relationships. How do we maintain romance and passion over a lifetime of marriage? The answer is, it's not going to stay the same. It's going to change. So whatever worked for you when you were in your 20s, is probably not going to work when you're in your 30s and 40s. And what works in your 30s and 40s is probably not going to work when you're in your 50s and 60s. So what kind of changes can we expect? And how do we make this work for a marriage over a lifetime? So what we can say is that the changes that occur for us individually are inevitable over a lifetime. And to simplify it, let's look at what happens when we're a newborn baby. Newborn baby, we experience, we're just a, a crying and then we get milk. The breast comes and feeds us. And we do very well with that kind of relationship. We have that experience of, of um, just crying and then the milk comes. We get to be two, it's different. We cry and the milk's not coming. Mother is not, not, not cooperative. Mother has a different uh, opinion about how things should be now. It's not the same as just crying and getting milk. That's a big change. So what kind of change do we see? We felt really close to that which we love. We felt just immediately, infinitely close when we were breastfeeding. But now that we're two, we're feeling more distant. We're not getting what we need right away. That's an inevitable change, and we know it's going to happen, and it's normal. We don't expect it to be any other way than that. That's the nature of growing as a two-year-old. Then we get to be six or eight, and what happens? Ah, we're happy again. We love being part of the family. Here we are uh, experiencing that, wow, this is great. We have brothers and sisters. We have, we have cousins, and we're just part of this big family, and we just love it. We're just one of the big family, and we're once again close to everything we love. And then what happens? The teenager, and all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but it changes again. We're not getting what we want. We know what we need, like a two-year-old, and we're not getting it. Our parents aren't cooperative. Other people aren't cooperative. It's a big problem. And we don't like not getting what we want. We're feeling distant to those things that we love, are our parents. And that's a difficult time. It is inevitable. We don't complain that this shouldn't be that way. It just, it's just the nature of growing and developing. It's going to happen. Then what happens? We get to be 20-something. And once again, we're in a romantic relationship. And we love that relationship. Our partner is so lovely. <clears throat> We're going to get married to this partner who is so lovely, who just is so concerned about our needs and desires. And we just love being together in this relationship. Oh, it's so wonderful. Does it last? No. What happens? That marriage that's so lovely, we just love that marriage. We then grow and develop. We have different events that happen. But the main thing that happens is that we change inside of ourselves. We change into 
a, a person who needs more space, who, who, who's tired of just being there for the family and for the children. We want our own personal self-expression. We want our own creativity. We want our own career. We want our own time for ourselves, for our own in, 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 inner development. And we feel more distant from those we love. It's different than a teenager, but we are on that side of the cycle where we want more space. These are the things that happen inevitably in a relationship. And it doesn't stop there. Well, let me give my so, lovely wife so, a chance to respond. So and, let me say this in a different way. Your first marriage with your spouse, your partner, um, will inevitably disappoint you. And you will um, find that it is um, it, um, not satisfying. It will be essentially over. And our news is that you can recreate an entirely different marriage with the same person. If you have the skills and if you understand what's going on in your life that, that, has, that has created the shifts and changes the dynamics in your partnership. If you wanna understand how you've grown and how you see the world differently and what you want and what um, you see for your life going forward. And you have to es essentially recreate your relationship um, by this um, very impersonal self-reflection and negotiation with your partner. And you can have an entirely different marriage with the same person. It is remarkable. So many couples I've seen uh, are in this, in this inevitable um, uh, place where they feel um, stopped and thwarted in their um, personal development, their personal lives, and they feel um, resentful and frustrated with their partners. And all of that can be reworked uh, if there's a willingness. And it has to do with really starting with understanding that you're not the same person decade after decade. Um, uh, we change. We change from being um, uh, focused on ourselves and defining our career, our relationships, um, or our educational goals. And we, sh we, we um, life shifts when we become parents, if we choose to become parents. We're focused on nurturing the next generation and essentially sacrificing yourself. Um, and that's a time when, when responsibilities are very great and there is not very much time for self. And um, after a while, that gets to be a problem that needs to be solved. And then there's, and there's um, you know, renewal of um, purpose and redefinition of self uh, and more creativity. All of these things need to be first understood as individuals and shared. And, um, and, and there is a, a way of recreating a relationship at every level. And we want that for you. So it's important to have that big perspective that when you get into a feeling like, oh, I'm not getting what I need from this marriage relationship, don't think that there's something wrong with your partner or something wrong with the marriage. It is inevitable that you have to grow and develop through life. And that's going to happen. And it's good to grow and develop. And Having that big picture, seeing, okay, this is what happens over a marriage, allows you to not blame your partner or your marriage for why your life is so miserable. That this is, this is it's supposed to grow through things. And to grow through things, what we recommend is that you develop new skills. Because as you're growing through life, there are certain important skills that you need to have to be able to share with your partner in ways that don't create more upset because as you're growing through these different phases of life's inevitable movements it's important to have certain skills and barbara and i teach these skills in our classes that are called falling in love forever classes we have five classes takes about two hours each. And we teach you skills that are critical. One skill is learning how to make requests really nicely, not to create upsets from the requests, but to let your partner know that, hey, you know, I've changed from where I was 10 or 20 years ago. And 
uh, it would really make me happy if, and you give them the, the description of what it is, and you have a discussion about it, and you have to learn to talk about it. Another skill you learn is you're not going to agree on everything, and you need to learn how to talk deeply about things without getting into arguments, actually to listen to each other. It's a great skill to have, and, and it's very, very important. We teach skills of how to understand when your partner behaves in ways that seems kind of peculiar to you. They're not doing it to aggravate you, but it just comes from their own inner experience of life. And you have to understand what those are. So you understand they're not doing it to torture you. It's just where they come from. And then we have skills to teach you how to catch an upset before it blows up into an argument, how to share in such a way that you can prevent these upsets from exploding. We have these different skill sets. And then we, we give you more information about the big picture of life as we're talking about it here, how it works and how it affects you. And we share personal stories because Barbara and I have been through these things. It's not like we're, we're immune to this. We're sharing our own experiences. Right. It doesn't matter that we're, you know, ed very, very educated or you're not educated. Life is life. And um, there's a lot of, you know, very crucial experiences that alter the way you see life. And, it, and these changes are inevitable for everybody. Should we uh, share about the, um, should, we, should we announce the courses we're giving online? We have a course in parenting. We have a course in um, uh, how to have more sex. We have, what are, what are the rest of the courses? We have a course in learning how to feel like you're number one with your partner. We have a course in dealing with financial issues, money upsets, money concerns. And we have a course on, um, there's one more course. I forget to. We have lots of courses because life is life and there are challenges in lots of dimensions of life. We want you to have knowledge and skills to be able to partner properly and feel good about your partnership and, and stay in love forever. So do, do go to our website, themarriagemap.com, themarriagemap.com, which, which has uh, a lot of this information on it. And we encourage you also to read our book, The Marriage Map, The Road to Transforming Your Marriage from Ordeal to Adventure. So these are all great practical things that you can um, uh, use and take part in. And we encourage you to do that. And we look forward to hearing and speaking to you again in the future on uh, one of these uh, uh, podcasts and Facebook Live discussions. Thanks so much. Pleasure to be with you. And wishing you love. Bye now. Thank you for watching the Falling in Love Forever show with Drs. Barbara and Michael Grossman. Join us next week for another informative discussion to help you keep your love alive. Be sure to visit us at themarriagemap.com or find out about our relationship classes at fallinginloveforever.com. <laughs>